I'm Pedro Silva, and that's Uri. Uh, we're both going to present in the, in the next few minutes. Uh, we're probably the only thing between uh, you and your lunches, so we'll try to be brief so that you can get to eat uh, as early as possible. Uh, so I'm at Credit Karma. Uh, for those of you who don't know uh, what Credit Karma is, uh, we focus on helping users improve their financial lives. Uh, and we do that by gathering a lot of data. Uh, we ingest more than five terabytes of data per day uh, that we use to um, help users achieve their financial goals. Um, predictive analytics wise, we try to anticipate users' needs to help them achieve the, the goals that they want to achieve. So we run two uh, billion model predictions per day in real time as users navigate through the website to show them the most relevant features. So we are, uh, at our core, a predictive analytics company. Today I'm going to talk about uh, anomaly detection at Credit Karma and the challenges we face as we grew the business, um, specifically uh, with regards to anomaly detection. So I'm going to go through the challenges we faced, the solutions we found, and the next steps we want to take. Uh, the first learning uh, is that uh, manual thresholds might work when you're a very small company, but as you grow the business, it becomes really hard to uh, maintain and really costly to maintain. So typically, the first step on anomaly detection at a company is you have your Excel spreadsheet, your Google Sheet, basically, and you um, develop your own functions to identify whether it's, uh, the metric is within the, the, the bounds of normality or not. At a certain point, uh, Excel spreadsheets on scale, and you, get, you need a production solution. So you create your own tools, and that's what we did. So this is uh, the UI for the tool that we developed, I think, four or five years ago. Um, our engineers developed it to identify anomalies in clicks or impressions. I can't remember exactly which one was. You can see the daily trends in clicks, and we highlighted in red whenever uh, the, re the bars uh, were 10 or 10% 10 more or less um, different than the same hour the previous week, on the same day of the week of the previous week. Um, because not all days are the same, so you need to account for the day of the week to make sure that you're not, uh, you're detecting anomalies correctly. Uh, the challenge with this approach is that it does not capture the natural variance of the, the metrics that you're trying to, uh, to measure. And many of the, of the metrics we're trying to measure have variants that's specific to the, to the day of the week and to the hour of the day on each day of the week. Uh, you can develop your own functions to identify the anomaly, but it's not very scalable when you have uh, more than a handful of, of metrics. Um, so when you get to a stage in your business in which you need to measure across multiple dimensions, so at Credit Karma we care about tens of dimensions, for example, the type of event, the platform, uh, the version of the app, the pages that the users go to, the credit score of the user, uh, the partners. Um, when you get to a stage where you actually need to track the business across all these dimensions, it becomes really hard because each of those dimensions has tens to hundreds of values. So if you want to go to the finest level of granularity uh, on, for example, measuring, for example, uh, total clicks on iOS, on v3 of the app, uh, on a specific page for users with a in, within a specific score band and uh, clicks on a specific partner, uh, it becomes really hard to monitor all the, all the combinations that come up from these metrics. Right now we're measuring actually tens of thousands of metrics in real time and it's impossible to keep up manually with all the, the thresholds across all of these metrics. So we need an automated solution. Um, the other thing that happens is that if you, even if you try to do that, it's very likely that you're going to get a ton of false positives. And what happens when you get a ton of false positives is that the, the folks who are using the tool do not trust the tool anymore for the purpose that it was intended to be built for. Um, and uh, basically, it kind of defeats the purpose of building the tool if the accuracy of the tool is not there. So in summary, if you decide to do it manually, uh, it's going to be very hard because you have a ton of false positives, ton of false negatives. Uh, in general, accuracy will plummet. And if accuracy plummets, the users will not trust the tool. 
second problem is late detection. Uh, it's kind of an obvious one, but it's worth to highlight because there's uh, dormant issues that happen over time that you don't even know about. Uh, I would call them uh, false negatives that are happening, but you don't know about them at this, at this point in time. That can uh, actually have a dramatic business impact if you accumulate business impact over time. Um, so we need to identify the anomalies as early as possible. Third, connected with that is uh, after we identify the anomaly, you need to spend resources identifying why the anomaly might be happening. And the process typically at the company goes something like analysts go to Looker or Tableau or whatever tools they're using. Uh, they uh, file a ticket with engineering. Uh, it goes to the engineering side. They go through uh, New Relic, Grafana, Splunk, uh, GitHub to figure out what deployments were done at a specific point in time and correlate them with the business anomaly that was happening. But it can be really difficult to do this and it, it's time consuming. Um, so quick summary of the issues. Um, number one, manual thresholds do not work from our experience. So we need an automated machine learning based ideally solution to deal with this. Second one, you need to detect the issues as early as possible. So you need real time alerts and thirds, uh, you need to get to the root cause of the anomaly as early as possible so that you can focus your efforts on resolving the anomaly rather than trying to run around and identify why the anomaly might be happening. So we came across Enodot um, a couple of years ago. We did a trial. Um, we evaluated building in-house versus uh, purchase, purchasing their solution. We did a one-month trial. Uh, it worked out pretty well. We identified anomalies that we didn't even though we had, and we decided to purchase a product. Uh, it would have taken us, we did an internal uh, traditional buy versus build uh, analysis, and uh, we identified it to take us about uh, two years of a scrum team with software engineers and one data scientist uh, to actually develop a solution that would uh, provide the same level of functionality. In addition to that, uh, obviously, if you build the tool yourself, you have to maintain it. So there's also costs associated with that. So uh, we adopted the Anodot, and the best way to showcase the value is use a real example. So uh, a week ago, uh, we had a business incident. So at the top, you see a business metric. I uh, masked it because it's confidential. I cannot show you exactly what it is. Uh, but you see the clicks or impressions, I can't really remember what it was, spiking to 10x what they used to be in a period of five minutes. Um, Anodot immediately identified the anomaly, and they the tool automatically sends you uh, via email or Slack message uh, a notification saying this anomaly is happening right now. Um, and click here if you want to learn more. If you click on the, on the link, it takes you here. And the, at the bottom, you see that there's a technical metric that was highly correlated with uh, the first anomaly that, uh, that we saw uh, that spiked at the same time. So the error rate on that specific microservice went from 0% to 100% in five minutes. So uh, with this tool, this is just one example, it happens every week. Um, we're able to quickly identify that the anomaly was happening, why the anomaly was happening, and focus our efforts on resolving the anomaly rather than uh, running around with analysts and engineers trying to figure out what uh, the root cause could be. So a little bit more detail on uh, how this adds value to us. We don't need to be concerned about managing machine learning models. That's all done behind the scenes, and uh, we don't even need to know which methodologies they use because it just, it just works. Uh, they provide, we stream metrics in real time to them, business metrics and technical metrics. Uh, so, and they alert us whenever there's an anomaly in any of the tens of thousands of metrics that uh, we send to them. And again, a metric is connected with the slide that I showed previously, is a specific combination of the values of each of the dimensions. So clicks on iOS on a specific page for a specific score band, whatever it is. So we can go to a very fine level of granularity. It integrates well with other internal tools that we use, Slack and email. Already talked about this, little to no developments, little to no maintenance, and finally, a low percentage of false positives, which uh, makes us pay more attention to the alerts because when they pop up, they're usually a real anomaly that's happening. So the key takeaways, um, 
from our growth stage from 10 million users, 75 million users, is that what worked initially does not work now at scale. And there's solutions out there uh, that actually can address your needs. There's experts in this domain. Uh, so if you're thinking about uh, building solution in-house, uh, at least evaluate external options. Uh, and that really fit well with our business uh, and technical use cases, so we decided to adopt them. And finally, what's next? Uh, as I mentioned, we ingest over five terabytes of data per day, and uh, the quality of data is critical to business decisions. So we need to make sure that the quality is always there. So we're planning on integrating our uh, business, our data ingestion uh, services with the Anodot to alert us each time there's uh, a failed ETL or uh, an issue with with events being lost or uh, metrics not making sense. Uh, second, uh, there's anomalies that are tagged as anomalies that are not real anomalies. I'll give you an example. When we launched tax, uh, free tax filing uh, last year, uh, we saw a huge shift in the pattern of usage uh, of our app and website. And when that happens, the business metrics are going to change significantly. Uh, so it's going to uh, pop an alert saying that, hey, there's a problem with this specific metric. But it was by design, right? So you made a decision to ramp up a feature to 100%. That actually has an impact on uh, the way users use it. So we're planning on sending these uh, point-in-time events on the technical side or on the business side. Uh, to Anodot, and they have a feature functionality that allows you to flag a specific timestamp and say, at this point in time, uh, we shipped a new set of models, machine learning models, or we had a new deployment of a specific feature, whatever it is. Uh, so that's it on my side. I'm going to pass it to Uri, who leads Anodot, who's going to take you through uh, the product in depth. Uh, and if you're interested in joining Credit Karma, just follow the link. We're always hiring. Thank you. Thank you, Pedro. So uh, Pedro will be back uh, later for uh, some uh, questions. And uh, what I will do, I will just uh, talk a bit about um, what is anomaly detection in a nutshell, uh, following what Pedro talked about, and show some other customer examples. And again, uh, my name is Uri Maoz, and I lead the US business for Anodot. And Anodot is a company that what we do, we deliver real-time business incident detection through anomaly detection. And you saw the examples from uh, Pedro's uh, use case. So the, again, to reiterate the pain, uh, companies uh, in many, many different verticals, either if you're looking in e-commerce, fintech, gaming, IoT, and so on, uh, are collecting a lot of data. They are trying to use manual tools uh, like dashboards, reports, and static threshold in order to understand what is happening in their business and to be alerted on, them, on that, but they are miss a lot of insight. And they find a lot of, about a lot of problems only a few days, a few weeks, a few hours after the fact. And this delay costs them money, costs them customer loyalty, brand equity, and more. So. How to gain real-time business insight? The answer that uh, we give at Anodot is using uh, anomaly detection, unsupervised advanced machine learning to learn your data's normal behavior, uh, identify what is abnormal behavior, and then alert, uh, score, correlate, uh, and alert on everything uh, in one alert. Now, I will talk uh, uh, very briefly about the process. This is a process that uh, we design in Anodot for anomaly detection. It's a five-step process. The entire process is completely unsupervised. Uh, like Pedro mentioned, the, there is no configuration needed. Uh, you as a customer doesn't need to care about that. But it kind of shows you like, what are the things that you need to take into account when you run anomaly detection uh, solution. So uh, first of all, we are talking about metric collection. So the metric collection of the anomaly detection platform should be universal. You want to be able to collect data from various sources, uh, either it's a number of product purchase or impression and clicks or temperature of machine in the IoT space or uh, even IT uh, metrics. So at the end of the day, you will be able to find anomalies on everything and actually get a correlated picture. Uh, and, and related to that, uh, Pedro talked about the thousands of uh, metrics that they are uh, um, covering. Uh, we have customers that are sending millions of different metrics, so you want to have a platform that will be able to scale to millions and millions of uh, metrics. Then what you do, you learn the normal behavior of the data, 
Um, so if we look on that example, learning of the normal behavior means that you want to identify what are the ranges that I expect the metric to be at. So if we are looking here on this example, which represent number of payment completed for specific payment provider, uh, the strong blue line represents the actual data. In the shaded area, this is the outcome of the machine learning that actually represent, again, the ranges. I expect the, the number of payment completed for this specific payment provider to be at this range at each point of the day. And the orange line, this is an anomaly, meaning that something happened. It's now outside of the normal behavior range, and now the system will see that and alert on that. Now, learning of the normal behavior is something that is very hard to do. Uh, Pedro talked about two years that they estimated to build something like that. You need to take a lot of factors into account. Factors like uh, multiple seasonality. Seasonality talk about the fact that the behavior of the data will be different each day of the week, each hour of the day, uh, and there will be some season behavior. Um, we need to take into account the fact that you will have multiple signal types. We saw a lot of companies that try to develop something by themselves, but they focus only on smooth behavior. But then what happens when you have uh, different behaviors of the data, like multimodal, spot, irregular sampling, and more. So basically, um, at least what we did in Anodot is that we developed a set of around 15 different algorithms, and we switch between them in real time, so the learning will be very accurate, no matter which signal type you are looking at. And the learning of the normal behavior is very important to do it accurately, because otherwise the rest will not worth much, because then you will start getting a lot of false positive. So this is learning of the normal behavior. Then the third step, talking about abnormal behavior learning. Abnormal behavior learning, talking about the fact that in any anomaly detection system, you will have a lot of anomalies. But not all anomalies will be important. Some will be more important, some will be less important. And the, the goal of this stage is to actually analyze the anomalies and give them a score, a significant score between 0 to 100, which represent how significant is the anomaly, how important it is. And then the user can focus only on the important anomalies and ignore all the noise. And the fourth step, Pedro really talked nicely about that, about how they correlate between business uh, incident to, to technical incident. A lot of time problems will come together and you will start to get a lot of different alerts. Uh, there will be a drop of purchases of the product on the website, picking page latency, picking database error, picking HTTP errors, and we start to get multiple alerts and try to understand what is going on. Uh, and it's very hard to understand what is the correlation. So what we are talking here about this step is to actually that when you, are, you have an anomaly, the system will actually do automatic correlation, will understand the relationship, and will send one alert that will be very concise. And we can see here in this example how, on the same time that we have a drop in the number of payments completed, you also have a peak in API errors for this specific payment uh, provider. So you can actually know that something is going on there and go and fix that problem. And this is just a naive example. We see a lot of examples where a customer says uh, dozens of different metrics that are correlated together. So this was in a nutshell, what are the process uh, of uh, anomaly detection? And of course, all of this should be unsupervised behind the scene, uh, and the user just uh, need to be alerted on what is going on. Now, again, quickly, I want to, to just uh, give example of other use cases. So we work with many verticals. This is an example of an ad tech company that has a loss of $300,000 for a problem that they didn't identify, and it happened for, for 10 hours. And the, the story here is that this is a company that actually um, has an algorithm to do smart uh, advertisement bidding. And one of the developers uh, deployed some uh, fix uh, to the algorithm, and it kind of uh, caused some problem that uh, made it invest wrong for 10 hours. So basically, uh, what happened is that all the money of the client was invested wrongly, and they needed to later on, after they find it only 10 hours after the fact, to compensate the, the customer for this $300,000. So this is a major loss. And the anomaly is very clear, but it was in a very low granularity, only on specific advertisement code, only on a specific client, so no one saw that. 
Another example in e-commerce, loss of $180,000 in five hours. So this is talking about large retailer, and there was some problem with one of the payment provider. So there were a lot of errors, and the transactions were not completed. But again, no one tracked it because they have hundreds of different payment providers. So this was missed for five hours, and uh, the loss was around $180,000. Another example, company that has mobile apps uh, and, uh, and they had a problem of some release that they released and there was a problem in all their Android versions. There was a, a peak in the crash rate, drop in the retention rate, and they found it after, only after two days and got some brand uh, damage and also loss of revenue. Another example, with this will be the last one, uh, which is cross vertical. It's not specific for one vertical, but uh, like Pedro mentioned, companies collect tons of data, and in this process of collecting the data, they do a lot of translations to the data before they store it to the data warehouse. They have a lot of events reporting for multiple areas. Uh, we have companies that every event that someone is doing on the mobile app is reporting to the system, and, and the accuracy of this data is very important because all the analytics and all the decisions are being taken on, this, on top of this data. And in this process, there are a lot of errors. A lot of events suddenly start, stop to reporting, or events st still reporting, but there is a problem in the translation, and there, there is picking the number of nulls. And the damage is that decisions are being taken based on wrong data. It is being discovered after weeks uh, that uh, decisions were already, already implemented, and then the company actually need to go back, fix the data, fix the analytics, and fix the decision. It's a bit hard to do, so uh, it's a very big uh, damage. And using anomaly detection to do that, because at the end of the day, uh, everything is data, if you look on the content on the data, when a problem happens, you will suddenly see a drop in the number of transactions that you expect to see, or picking number of nulls, and so on. So it's a very uh, smart way to actually find data quality problems, and we see many, many companies that are doing it right now. Uh, last slide, so um, just to reiterate again, Anodot, uh, this is a, sl a slide uh, showing a partial list of Anodot customers. The anomaly detection on top of business data and being agnostic to the type of the data is something that we see uh, getting a lot of momentum, a lot of traction. It's very important to companies. And again, with Anodot, uh, we deliver a real-time business incident detection through anomaly detection. Uh, we have a booth outside there. And I encourage you to come and to see a demo of the product. We also have, a, I don't know if you saw the poster with the penguins. So we have also a game of find the anomalies. So I encourage you also to find the anomaly. And with that, uh, thank you. And I will call Pedro back uh, if you have any questions. Any questions? The, the what, sorry? Data warehousing space? Yeah. yeah. The EPN space. Uh, you explained the last example, right? So where exactly does uh, an analog sit? Like, does it sit on top of uh, the warehouse, or does it sit in between the EPN process? It depends. Uh, you, it depends how you implement it. But the idea is that you take uh, all your data and you translate it to time series data. So for example, you report to Anodot uh, what is the number of events from this type that I expected to have, or, or not expected. Or you will send all the time what are the number of events that you have, or what is the number of nulls, and so on. And then there will be some normal behavior for that. And whenever something happens, Anodot will identify that and alert on that. Now, the way that you report the data to Anodot, you can either report it before you actually enter the data to the data warehouse or from the data warehouse. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Um, so I have a question for uh, if you have an architecture, I understand, of like microservices working together. Um, and I believe that the, the data for each of these would be different. I want to understand what was <coughs> the overhead of integrating and not into your system and, um, and the data collection. How difficult was it to identify where it thinks that what should be? Yeah. Yeah, yeah uh, great question. So. Um, Many of the, the use cases that, uh, that we implement an Anodot for uh, actually aligned with metrics that were, we are already gathering in some other way. So what we did is parallelize basically the, the streaming of the data to our own data stores with uh, the streaming of the data to Anodot at the same time as the event happens. 
Um, so the the places where we wanted to instrument uh, the uh, the metrics, uh, we already knew where where they were. It's just a matter of going through them and making sure that all of them were streaming data to uh, Anodots API. So it took about um, a month uh, to build a solution that streamed data to uh, to their service. So Anodot does not collect the data. You have to give it the data. It will just exactly. Yeah, they have an API you can push data to, uh, and uh, they conduct anomaly detection on top of data that you're streaming. Thank you. Sure. Yeah. So do the data has to be transferred to your company, or some kind of So most of the customers that we have today are on the, the cloud. Uh, Pedro can also talk about credit karma that is pushing data to the cloud. Uh, we also have an on-premise solution, but most of the customers today choose the cloud solution because it's the easiest one uh, to go. Anything to add? Um, yeah, if you're concerned about uh, the uh, granularity of the events you would be streaming to a third party like Anodot, uh, you can actually aggregate data before you send by uh, second or by 30 seconds or by minutes so that uh, Anodot, does, Anodot does not have access to the individual records that you're streaming. So there, you can perform aggregations before you send it, and we're um, adopting some of those techniques. Exactly. Thank you. Thanks, guys.